Welcome to Morphology, the words of language. Uh, this is the chapter before you start your linguistics uh, worksheet, and it's an important one. Um, as you can see, morphology deals with words. Um, like phonology deals with sound, morphology deals with words, and the word, the meaning of the words. Right? There are some quotes here you can see from Aristophanes, uh, by words the mind is winged. And Mark Twain said, a powerful agent is the right word. Whenever we come upon one of those intensely right words, the resulting effect is physical as well as spiritual and electrically prompt. Right, that's quite a mouthful. Um, okay, so apparently um, they state that the uh, English dictionaries contain half a million words right entries <laughs> obviously we don't know all of them and it says that a child that is six years old knows 13,000 words right so this is a basic introduction to morphology which I would like you to read through uh, so we can save some time um, it is important that we know words because we communicate and without words, we cannot communicate. Words also convey the um, complexity of our situation, the intensity. It conveys our emotions, right, through words. Very important. Um, now, someone who speaks a language generally knows uh, a few words in that language, or uh, if they have a high proficiency, they know many words. So you might know many words in Afrikaans, and you might know many words in English, or in Zulu, or in Kosa, or any other language, even foreign languages, right? Um, and then there are some words that we uh, we don't know, but sometimes uh, we might guess Oh, that sounds like, or it's, it looks like, or it might be um, in Japanese or Spanish or French uh, and so on, um, you know, but uh, generally the sounds, which we're not going to be worried about here, but uh, the sounds come together to create words. And when we hear the words, we know what it means, right? Like, uh, for example, uh, Add a line more. Add a line more. Right. If you if you didn't know that there was a pause, then uh, you would confuse these two words. Uh, you need a check. I need a check. Uh, more emissions. More emissions. Lowest bidder. Right. Margin of error. Pick up and drop off. So we we know what some words are. Uh, because we speak the language, right? It may be confusing to other people, but generally, mm, to us, we understand. Okay. Um, some words, because of the pronunciation, can be confusing, like uh, un petit, un de petit. Yeah, sounds like Humpty Dumpty, but a little one of a little one. But I'll let you read through this. This is... Um, mm, uh, very self-explanatory and easy, right? Now, we have different classes of words in our minds, right? We call those the grammatical category or the syntactic class of word. So noun, pronoun, verb, adjective, adverb, preposition, conjunction, these are all grammatical categories or syntactic classes, right? Which you, you already know, right? The difference between a verb, adverb, uh, and so on. So we come now to two kinds of words that we are going to be dealing with, oh, uh, content words and function words. Now, content words such as uh, objects, actions, attributes, etc., cetera, um, are, class of, are described by nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, right? We call these content words, okay? That's pretty simple. And then we have another one, open class words, Right, we can add more to these kinds of classes like Facebook, blog, frac, online, and so on. Right, you can add words to this open class. Uh, we call these open class now. Um, function words, uh, like in, of, the, and they, these on their own they have no meaning, right? So we call them function, uh, function words like uh, 
the boy, a boy, they give you some examples, right? Um, you can go ahead and read through all of this. Um, I want to get to morphemes. Okay, morphemes, as it states here, are the minimal units of meaning, right? The smallest units of meaning in a word. So, for example, if you look at uh, A and B here, you'll see desirable, undesirable, right? So, here, un means not, right? Desirable, uh, undesirable. I desire you. You are undesirable. I do not desire you, okay? So, un means not. So, you can see undesirable, unlikely, uninspired, unhappy, undeveloped, unsophisticated, right? Here. Mm. So as we move through our language, you'll find many words that you can break down into smaller words. The smallest unit of meaning uh, is called a morpheme, right? So here, an is a morpheme, okay? So the example they give you, undesirable, unlikely, un, two meaningful units, un and desirable. You know, that's pretty simple. Here, mm, un also uh, occurs, mm, you'll see it here, okay? Phone, phonology, phoneme, okay? Phonetic, phonologist, phonemic, right? So here we can see phone is a minimal form, right? You can't break it down any further, right? PH doesn't mean anything. So, fo, though it may be pronounced like fo, has no relation in meaning. Okay? And on is not the prepositional on. So, all the words on the list, fun has the identical meaning pertaining to sound. Okay? So, fun. Phone, phonetic, phonetics, phonetician, uh, phonic, telephonic, telephone. Okay? You get the picture. Okay? Um, as we move on, okay, uh, the study of internal structure of words and of the rules by which words are formed, we call morphology. Okay, this is a whole thing in linguistics, right? Later, you'll be teaching your students the differences between, uh, you know, words that sound the same, but are not the same, right? Or you'll be teaching them why we make words up this way. And sometimes you'll notice your, your young learners will even make words up of their own. And you'll have to tell them, that's not a word. Okay. Or that word is incorrect. This is the correct word. So that's also uh, morphology. Now we are studying it in great depth so that you'll be able to teach uh, simple concepts. Right. Okay. So one morphine, boy, desire, meditate. Right, two morphemes, boy, ish, desirable, three morphemes, and so on. You can read through that later uh, in the interest of saving time. Okay. Um, the worksheet has a lot of these words that I would like you to make note of uh, monomorphemic word, etc. Where you see the bold, go through that bound and free morphemes, right? Uh, free morphemes are morphemes that. Uh, can occur. So, for example, by themselves, like for example, um, particular morphemes is whether they can stand alone or whether they must be attached to a base morpheme, right? So, some morphemes such as boy, desire, gentle, man may constitute words by themselves. These are free. So, if it can stand by itself, it's a free morpheme, right? But other morphemes like ish, ness, li, pre, trans, and un can't occur by themselves, right? So we call these affixes bound morphemes, right? They have to mix or join with another word to have meaning. On their own, they have no meaning. Okay, prefixes and suffixes, this is easy. You probably all know this. Pre means before, suffix means after. So pre, meditate, prejudge, those are prefixes, right? Suffixes, are like they occur after like for example sleeping eating running climbing right suffixes you can read through this section this section is pretty simple um infixes now this not so much in english but uh, other languages right infixes occur in the middle you can read through these through as well 
Okay, second fixes are the both at the beginning and at the end. Also read through this. Um, roots and stems, right? A root of a word, um, like for example, paint, painter, er, right? Two morphemes here, one morpheme here. So this is a root, and this is called a stem, right? You can read through this. This is also pretty easy, right? So uh, root, Chomsky, stem, Chomskyite, and so on, and then they give you the the whole breakdown here. You can look through it slowly when you have time. Um, bound roots, similar to what we discussed. Okay, the rules of word formation. Um, you can read through this. It's not necessarily necessary for you to know this in great uh, detail. Um, derivational morphology, right? A derived word. You can also uh, read through this like boyish, virtuous, Elizabethan, picturesque, affectionate, and so on. These are all pretty simple morphology uh, rules. As you go through your worksheet, you can read through chapter two, and chapter two will help you uh, to figure out what the worksheet asks you to do, right? Um, okay. Um, the inflectional morphemes uh, are. Here, as you can see, S, E, D, and it gives you the tense, the past participle, plural, and they give you some examples, also pretty straightforward. Uh, I'd like you to read through all of this as well. Um, now, the section, this section you can skip, okay? We're not going to be covering this in great detail because it doesn't impact you, but uh, from page 48, okay, mm, from page 48, uh, to okay, uh, to page fifty-two, right? So from rule productivity, uh, we can we can start again with rule productivity. Uh, the un is very important, and the uh, the uh, processes for making words, right? You can read through this. And it's also going to help you with your uh, worksheet, okay? Um, and some of this will appear in your exams, especially the words that are in bold, like accidental gaps in terms of definitions and things and so on, right? And then other morphological processes, uh, back formations, right? Mm, so, for example, pedal was derived from peddler on the mistaken assumption that the er was the attentive suffix right such words are called back formations do you understand um okay so uh, um, back formation sometimes a word is created after an original word right so for example hawk hawker stoke stoker um swindle swindler Burgle, burglar, etc. Right? So you can read through there. They give you a complete explanation of everything. It's pretty uh, straightforward. Um, two or more words can be joined, right? Compound words, you know how that goes. So bittersweet, smart watch, white wash, and so on. You can break these down, right? The compound words into uh, smaller uh, words. You can read through this. You can skip the part about this here. Okay. Um, uh, don't worry about universality of compounding. Uh, malapropisms is the confusion of a word through misinterpretation uh, of its morphemes, right? Usually with humorous effect. So, in other words, uh, the definition is funny, right? So, here, abdicate, so to give up all hope of ever having a flat stomach, right? Haha, <laughs> very funny. A joke, right? Call those malapropisms. Um, don't worry about the sign language. We're going to skip the sign language uh, and so on. Um, you can read through the section on identifying morphemes, right? So uh, these are all pretty straightforward. You don't need to uh, know these in detail. Just read through it. Okay, so you have a nice, you have some idea of how to identify um uh, morphemes. So the summary section here gives you a complete uh, summary of the chapter. Uh, as I said, most of the of the bold 
words you need to know. And this gives you a summary, a nice summary uh, if you want to read through it, right? Um, as I said, the sections that you can leave out on sign language and so on is, is fine. Um, this chapter deals with the linguistic worksheet. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, the exam will also be based on uh, this chapter alone. So it's for the linguistic section, you'd need to know the bold words in the summary, right? If you're preparing for your exams, it's very important, especially their definitions. And you will be, you'll be getting a few cases for you to um, analyze in the exams. Nothing complicated. Okay, we'll keep things as simple as possible. All right, thank you.